So uh, hi everyone, uh, my name is Jaka Schwancová. I am a staff member in the SON IT department. I am originally a physicist. Uh, I did my uh, master's in astrophysics uh, at MATFIS, uh, Charles University in Prague. And then I did my PhD in subnuclear physics, which is experimental particle physics, uh, which is something which is very relevant to CERN. Uh, I did it also at, uh, at MATFIS. Uh, but at, uh, during, during the studies, I was uh, closely collaborating with uh, the computing community of, of the ATLAS experiment and other worldwide LHC computing grid experiments at CERN. So that brings me to, to my job at CERN as a computing engineer in CERN IT, uh, where I'm uh, responsible for uh, batch service, which is a cluster uh, with something like uh, 300,000 CPU cores or processors. Where, where we where we uh, process data not only from the experiments of the Large Hadron Collider at CERN, but also other experiments at CERN, and uh, for example from the AMS experiment, so some astroparticle experiments. AMS is uh, the space probe running on the International Space Station. So uh, I will not go into details of what kind of experiments we have at CERN. Uh, back to my back to my studies. Uh, as uh, Carolina said, uh, I am currently pursuing second master's degree, this time in computer science or on artificial intelligence and on robotics. This is an uh, area which is really very relevant, not only for CERN, but for many uh, big tech companies around the world. Uh, so now uh, I, in the chat, I, I shared the link to my presentation so that you can go through the slides at, uh, at your pace. Uh, and I will also share the, the presentation here uh, through the Zoom window. So in case uh, I will try to share now, in case I disconnect uh, accidentally, I will connect again, OK? Uh, I, point, I uh, list the website, caries.cern. I guess since you all connected to the webinar, you have at least heard about CERN or uh, Googled it or, or just uh, are just interested. So as I said, I'm a staff member in the CERN IT department. I work as a computing engineer uh, working on uh, infrastructures for data processing of the LHC and other experiments at CERN. So if I recall correctly, I was talking about smashing particles so mm -hmm. we are smashing particles which have really lots of energy. Uh, mm -hmm. For example, you can imagine it as, as a tennis ball with the energy of TGV train. So it's really, really very fast. Or, or uh, it's a, it's, it's a fast, uh, fast particle with lots of energy. And we are smashing these particles against each other to uh, understand uh, the beauties and uh, mysteries of the universe. Uh, as it was uh, shortly after the Big Bang. Uh, can you sh uh, show me slide three, please? Thank you. Science mission is to uh, push forward frontiers of research in fundamental physics or fundamental research in physics. We do it with the, with the accelerator chain. Uh, we don't have only large hadron glider, it's an BF relay chain of accelerators. And uh, Part or pillars of the mission is to support the research, to bring innovation, to collaborate really across across continents, across across cultures, across uh, religions in peace. This is really important in peace, and to inspire generations of future scientists and engineers. So let's go to the inspiration slide four. Uh, today, I will very briefly introduce opportunities for students and opportunities for professionals. By professionals, I mean someone who already graduated. Uh, depending on the job description, you may have to have already graduated either with your bachelor's degree or already with your master's degree. For opportunities for students, there are three programs which are open now until, with uh, applications open now until 1st of August. Uh, first one is technical student program, second is administrative student program, and third one is doctoral student program. Each year in summer, we are organizing CERN summer student program where you can come to CERN for a couple of weeks or for, for a few weeks and work with uh, scientists, engineers, and other CERN employees on something, some projects at, at CERN. 
opening for applications for these programs will be uh, in November. So for this year, this is now, now finished since uh, January or something. Uh, let's go to next slide. For what concerns uh, technical student opportunities, Okay, for, for professionals, we can offer either fellowship program or staff positions. Uh, next slide, please. Next slide, please. So first opportunity for student is technical student program. Uh, as uh, I hope Elish, Elishka is still connected, uh, you, can, you can ask her as well how it went with the application, what were the problems. When you would like to uh, become a technical student at CERN, applications, please note that they are open now until until august 2022 with the uh, job starting sometimes early next year in january february or march uh, this this program is open for uh nationals of send member states and associated member states uh, we can discuss which which uh, states they are but for example czech republic and slovak republic are member states of CERN. If you have any uh, particular question about member states and uh, associate member states, uh, you can ask, uh, feel free to ask later or, or uh, even after the webinar. Uh, to become technical student uh, student at CERN, you, to be eligible, you need to have completed at least a year and a half of undergraduate studies, either in the bachelor's or master's uh, program. Uh, in the field of applied physics, electro, electrical, uh, when you are selected and you're agreeing to come to CERN work as a technical student, you will have uh, you will have signed a contract of, of association with CERN, uh, which can be for between four and twelve months. And if you are really very very successful in the job, it may be under some some conditions extended up to fourteen months. As a technical student, you will be granted allowance of uh, three point three. Uh, thousand Swiss francs per month, which is a uh, tax net one, and you will have uh, allowance of 2.5 days of paid leave per month, which is standard for all some, uh, some members of personnel. Can we go to the next slide, please? We have also administrative student program, which is targeted for students in administrative field. And the rest of the conditions are the same as for technical student. Next slide, please. For the doctoral student program, you again have to be national of send member state or associated member state. Uh, you, when selected, uh, you will get contract of associations for at least six months, which can be rene renewable up to three years. And you will get, again, some elements and some paid leave uh, per month. Next slide, please. Uh, for summer student program, you have to be a uh, nation of some member state or associate member state, or in some cases, which are very rare, you can be also nation of non-member state. Uh, as a summer student, in order to apply and be eligible, you need to have completed at least three years of undergraduate studies during your bachelor's or master's. And this need to be in the field of physics, engineering, computer science, or mathematics. Uh, you would be grant or you will be granted association contract from uh, for eight to thirteen weeks, and you will be paid uh, daily allowance. Next slide, please. Now we go to opportunities for professionals. Next slide, please. First one is the fellowship program. Uh, there are currently applications open throughout the year. However, there might be cluster of generic positions in fellowship opening with deadline for applications, uh, something like February and uh, early September or late, late August. Uh, for, in order to be eligible to become fellow, uh, you need to have graduated at least with bachelor's, bachelor's degree. Uh, we have two, uh, let's say, seniority categories of fellows, junior and senior. For a senior fellow, you need to have at least four years after the degree which grants you enrollment or entrance into PhD program in your country. That means that in order to be a senior fellow in Czech, uh, from Czech Republic, you need to have finished your master's degree and have at least four years after finishing it in order to be eligible for senior fellow. But in the meantime, you can apply for a fellow program when you finished your studies. 
uh, either bachelor's or master's, and then you are eligible because you fulfill the condition for, uh, for uh, education. As a fellow, you will be granted employment contract for duration between six months and two years with a stipend which ranges uh, according to, to your uh, seniority and uh, the job. Next slide, please. For staff positions, the applications are again open throughout the year. There is no, uh, let's say, cluster deadline for the applications. And they are uh, mostly for or solely for nationals of San member state and associate member states. Uh, you need to be a graduate and a professional. Uh, that means that you uh, need to have some uh, prior job experience. Otherwise, you are better suited for fellowship if you lack, it, lack the experience. You will be granted employment contract and the salary according to the benchmark job and you know, the level of your experience. I uh, linked, uh, I think, not the range here because this is uh, really dependent on the benchmark job. Uh, if you are interested, please have a look at the link uh, on, on the slide. Uh, I guess this is the uh, last slide or? Yes. So uh, this is summary of, of uh, very, very quick, quick overview with links, uh, how you can apply, uh, what are the conditions of eligibility. And now let's stop, share, let's stop sharing the slides and let's start speaking. So what would you like to know about uh, jobs at CERN, about applications? Uh, what, what brought you here to this webinar? Let me know. Maybe just my question will be to Eliška because she currently confirmed that she was accepted uh, for a technical internship. Maybe she can uh, describe her way, how she, uh, why she decided to join CERN and try her luck. So okay. it's, a, it's a perfect example. And maybe <laughs> just you can uh, give uh, your uh, insight why the, she was so successful and why not. So I think the personal experience is always the best. Okay, so uh, I've decided to apply for technical student uh, internship uh, to CERN. I decided to apply a few months ago and uh, I was accepted. Um, and I will start uh, on 1st September for six months and eventually for 12 months. We will see. And uh, for my application, I needed uh, I needed two recommendations from my university professor and from my previous internship. So uh, I included uh, the reference letter from my uh, supervisor of my bachelor thesis, and I included uh, a reference uh, letter from my. Um, supervisor from my previous internship at the uh, uh, Czech uh, Science Academy. Uh, uh, and then it was necessary to include the list of my marks at school, at the university, and to write a motivation letter. And I believe that's all. <laughs> uh, and uh, yeah, and, and of course, CV. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, <laughs> if you want to ask something else, uh, maybe it's interesting that after I applied, I had to do also a Sonru interview. That's interview with um, some platform, Sonru. <laughs> uh, that's basically just that you interact with the computer. No, with uh, other person, but just with com computer. And I answered a couple of questions about uh, something like, it was something like, what's your uh, ideal uh, work environment? Uh, what was the biggest uh, success of your career? Or uh, uh, tell me something about history of CERN. And this interview was uh, in English. And uh, one question I was asked to answer in French, uh, which was surprising. Ça va? <laughs> <laughs> Ça va. And, uh, but it wasn't necessary uh, to answer in French. 
And then I was uh, selected uh, and uh, I was chosen by um, my future supervisor. And then I had interview interview with her. Uh, and that's all. This, this was last week, so it's new for me. <laughs> Fantastic. So congratulations, Aleška. I hope to see you here in September. Yeah, uh, sure. <laughs> again. <laughs> again. <laughs> Uh, I was wondering, uh, can you summarize how long does it uh, took to you, or does it take to you to compile the application? Yeah, yeah. Um, it was a very long process because I had to, um, I have, I had to have uh, my uh, reference letters and all these things from my university. So uh, I believe uh, I spent uh, about one month. Uh, to compile my application, but uh, in the end, it was about uh, one day of writing my motivation letter and um, compiling my CV and these stuff. And then I had a little bit of trouble because uh, I applied just before the deadline and I finished my application like 10 minutes before the deadline and I, I uh, pressed the button commit and nothing happened. <laughs> so the website wasn't working and I was really stressed out. Uh, so I need to open new application form and fill it uh, again in five minutes. <laughs> so it was really stressful, but everything went okay. So. <laughs> okay, so thank you very much for, for this honest answer. Uh, this is something I would like to really point out. Uh, tech, tech can go wrong uh, in the time when you least need it. For example, you can have the example of uh, my, my uh, Wi-Fi connection breaking down for about 10 minutes or something like that. So uh, really uh, make, make contingency plan when you are applying to CERN or when you are applying somewhere else where you really need to or want to get. Okay, make sure you do not uh, do not leave uh, the application for the last minute. It's uh, it's not looking very good because then you will you will compromise the quality, uh, the, the attention to details. And uh, then you realize hmm, maybe I should have mentioned also this in my CV and that and that. So uh, also the, the letters, it uh, may take time to write them. It may take time to the person where to the referee which you which you ask. Uh, it may take time for them to read the the message uh, and to uh, think about the solid letter. What you are uh, looking for is something which really points out your your strength points. Everyone who is applying to CERN is already a superstar. Okay, so. From from a bunch of superstars, we need to select people who who are better superstars. <laughs> okay, uh, it's it's really it's really very difficult. The tools which we have available are not uh, are not doing the job for me. I have to do the like work when I am selecting uh, colleagues. So take this into account. Uh, make sure you stand out of the gray mass of other applicants. Uh, if you if you do not succeed with the application to CERN, it doesn't say anything about you. Okay, there are really many many very good people who are applying to CERN, so just keep applying or apply somewhere else. Never never uh, organize yourself in a way that uh, you you will feel like this is the end of the world if I apply somewhere and they don't take me. This is not the way how to live a very happy life because you will put yourself under un undeserved pressure. And this is not the point. I think it's also important to say that well, there are many projects uh, which are uh, open it in, in CERN and you never know which one uh, will be open uh, under time when you apply. So if you are not selected, it doesn't mean that you are a bad person or that you are not eligible enough. 
it just opened that uh, uh, the project which you could be suitable for wasn't open at that moment, but will be open maybe in a few months and half a year. So just don't give it up and, and try again. And I also think it's very important if you just try to find any, any connection is your interest uh, between you, your interest and CERN. So I think that's the best, best approach. Okay, that was my question to Eliška. Did she also had any con any contact with them before, or she does she just apply because she just uh, okay, it's a it's a good uh, brand to apply for Switzerland. Yeah, I had contact with them before, uh, especially with Yarka, <laughs> uh, because I right after I graduated at high school. I went to CERN for two weeks uh, for high school students internship program. And then I, uh, I went to CERN at university uh, for program hands on CERN. And later uh, I was at CERN just for myself because uh, my bachelor thesis was about uh, experiment compass at CERN and calibration of some detectors there. So I know CERN, I, I knew CERN before and I I knew that that's a place when, uh, where I want to work, where I want to study. <laughs> so, <yeah. laughs> so maybe maybe it's good for people who are who are here and, are, and just consider to go to Switzerland for, for a few months. You just need to look around and find any, any connections, any contacts, someone in their area, maybe among friends, professors, or any contacts which can be helpful for the future. That's uh, definitely true. Uh, you can also come to CERN just uh, for a guided tour. Uh, I pasted the link, uh, visit.cern is actually a web page. So have a look and uh, maybe make a trip to Geneva, a visit CERN and uh, see what we what we do here. Any questions from our, our participants? There is one question in the chat from yeah. Ekaterina. Okay. okay. Hello, Ekaterina. Okay. Uh, I will also be joining CERN in September. Do you have some advice what to do before arrival? So uh, you should you should get uh, all the information from the HR department in uh, in the emails uh, and the the, the forms. Uh, what I would suggest that you do is to make sure that you have a valid passport or or uh, ID because this is something you will need uh, on a daily basis or you may need on a daily basis. Uh, I would say what concerns accommodation in place for the first up to two months, you can live in the, in the hostel, which is not very comfortable, but uh, you, can, you can live there, you can make your own meals, uh, you can uh, walk or, or bike uh, to work or, or take bus or car. Uh, what concerns uh, preparation for the project, uh, we really do not demand or do not want to uh, ask for free labor from, from our pros prospective colleagues. So it's, it's really up to you whether, whether you prepare for, for your uh, future project or job uh, now. You definitely can get, get in touch with your future, future supervisor. Uh, who should be who should be able to provide you with with uh, some resources to study? Uh, but uh, in general, uh, really the most important part is just to arrive to CERN, and we together we will take care of, of everything after you arrive. Okay, uh, and a second question is: uh, Thank you. What are the key differences you observe between people that get accepted and those who want who don't? It really depends on the project or, or on, on the qualifications. Uh, really, sometimes you have to be very lucky at CERN to get select selected for something. So uh, I, would, uh, I would say uh, 
make sure you have fun with things you do, with the projects you take part in, with things you explore. And then if you if you are having fun, uh, you are learning better, you are growing, you are uh, making contact with other people, networking with other people. And it can be it can be fun to apply, and uh, you may you may uh, run into someone who uh, does what you are really passionate about. So, really, my suggestion would be: this is not only for the applications, but uh, be passionate about what you do. Okay, so it means you have to put your heart. <laughs> yes. In, yes. And related to this, uh, if you are rejected, it can be really, really very difficult for you. So make sure you have plan B or C or D always. Uh, maybe a question for you. How many times did you try to get in? For me or yes. for Ivan? No, no, no uh, for Yerka. How, uh, you, so, you, did, you were lucky for the first try or you have to apply for me? Yeah, so... Uh, Actually, uh, when I was in my fourth year of my astrophysics master's degree, uh, I was uh, I was looking for a job for part-time job in Czech Republic, and I replied to an ad. And this is when I was when I started doing distributed computing in high energy physics. This was more than 16 years ago. So uh, when I when I was working on my master thesis uh, in astrophysics, I was already using computational grid to run some simulations uh, or data generations for my master's. Then uh, in the meantime, I already was uh, studying uh, computer science in parallel with physics. So I was really into, into IT and computing. And uh, a year after I graduated with master's, I started PhD in particle physics. So I changed uh, change, uh, area of, of interest between astrophysics and particle physics. And I did it just so that I can do distributed computing because I really enjoyed that. It was my passion and it still is. <coughs> so uh, then I, I started working in the distributed computing. This was uh, in, in uh, one of the experiments I was uh, on Atlas experiment, which is uh, one of the two general purpose, the, the two biggest ones at CERN or maybe around the world. Uh, I was really passionate about it, so I was really good about it or in it. Uh, and uh, the people who were responsible for, for some activities in the computing of Atlas noticed that. So uh, in my second year of PhD, uh, beginning of second year, I became responsible for organizing the shifters who are operating the operations or who are performing operations of, of the whole infrastructure around the world. So I, I was managing a team of uh, 60 people who were contributing part time and were distributed around the world, really in different time zones. And I was setting up processes and procedures on how we can best uh, operate the infrastructure and operate and analyze data and transfer data and so on. So uh, then I became responsible for monitoring of the infrastructure where I again set some trend. And uh, I had uh, this chain of jobs. And uh, when, I, when I applied for staff position, which was the first position to be employed by CERN, before that I was employed by uh, either Academy of Sciences uh, of the Czech Republic, Institute of Physics, or uh, by other other laboratories or, or uh, institutes around the world. My first job to be employee of CERN was to apply for this staff position, which I applied uh, in uh, May 20, 2015. Uh, then in July, uh, there was the selection, selection board. And out of originally 84 candidates, there were eight people at the board. And I won. I was selected, and this was this was start of my staff career at CERN. Now uh, my contract was originally for five years, which meant uh, until end of September 2020. Now, in uh, one year before that, I got extension for three more years. So currently, my my contract is until 2023. So I have sent like 16 months left. Now. 
I am applying for indefinite contract. So far, I apply three times and I haven't been selected. So now I have last chance to be selected for indefinite contract. If that happens, uh, I will have uh, I will have contract with CERN uh, until 67 eight years of my age. And if it doesn't, then after in at that time, after almost 18 years in in the in the area in the activity, I will finish. So for me, it happened for the, at the first attempt that I was selected. I was very good and lucky and also very good. Uh, but uh, it may happen that after 18 years, CERN will realize, OK, now we are losing this very good person. And uh, I will move on. Now, as you can see, uh, or I hope you can see from what I said, I'm not uh, I'm not stuck in one place. I have not been doing the same thing, the very same thing for 16, 17 years. I have been evolving. I have been evolving because I am passionate about what I do. And I am passionate about the environment, about the, the people, the, the activity, the mission of CERN. So I would suggest or propose to you to find something which you are really passionate about. And it will help you grow. I think it really works because you have to be open to any any chances, any possibilities. It's really it's nonsense to get stuck in only one idea. That if you pursue only one idea, it just to be it's good to be open and listen, go through different uh, tips, uh, to see just articles, meet different people. Not only networking, but also uh, building uh, um, nets. It's it's also important. Not only networking and small talks. So if you just uh, find what you really like, what you what you want to work on, and still have your eyes open, it can in turn break you down to Switzerland. And even it may end. Uh, nothing is indefinite. And uh, the thing is, all of us can be uh, replaced by someone else, and you never know when. <laughs> exactly. So, so keep on growing. <laughs> keep on growing all the time. <laughs> uh, any, any question for anyone? How many people uh, app, uh, usually people apply for technical student program? So uh, f uh, we have something like five or six areas. Uh, so it's not like everyone applies to one big uh, big uh, chunk, but rather to six, uh, five, six different smaller chunks. And in the in the one for IT uh, computing and robotics, uh, I believe it's something like. Uh, few hundred people applying each round. So uh, and then there are maybe 10 selected. OK, so imagine, uh, for example, few percent applicants are only few percent of applicants are successful. So uh, don't give it up. <laughs> don't, don't give up, uh, but uh, take it seriously. And at the same time, uh, make a plan B. Okay, and how many checks are currently in the, in the selection procedure? Do you know about it? Uh, this, this, I don't have the statistic, but uh, it's not many. So, so go ahead, <laughs> go ahead and apply. <laughs> okay, and if you met the uh, people mm. from the Czech Republic uh, down in Switzerland, uh, in a, from which area do they come from? Or uh... Uh, they come from all over the place. Uh, I think uh, most of them come from uh, university, which is in Prague uh, or from Brno, but they come really from all around the Czech Republic. It's not it's not Prague centric or, or Brno centric. But uh, the first thing is that first the students need to learn that there is some CERN and that they can uh, apply here, which I guess with you worked now. <laughs> And uh, it's it's really up to you. Uh, it's up to you when when you when you apply. Uh, what uh, what is your desire? My question was not a geographical question. The question was uh, more about the subject. It was physics ah, okay. or uh, IT or sure. So uh, I I uh, when I was selecting my my future colleague, 
uh, who will also start in September. Uh, I uh, I had access only to the IT uh, folder, IT computing and robotics. Uh, so for that, uh, there were a few handful of uh, Czech students or uh, students coming from Czech, from Czech universities. And I, I had the impression that they really were from universities around, uh, around Czech Republic or, or okay, uh, I noticed uh, Prague, Brno and uh, Ostrava. Maybe also Plzeň, but uh, it's getting better. Okay, it's not, it's not only Prague, it's not only Prague and Brno. But uh, it's not ideal, so this is why with, with uh, Carolina and uh, Kari Market we are uh, organizing these webinars. No, I think we just we only have to spread the word around that this is such an opportunity at CERN is not open to any particle physicist, but it's open to any any smart people. So I think exactly. more, more important is a mindset for the people, open mind and uh, the readiness. And that's it. Uh, okay, and then more question, how many uh, usually apply for administrative positions? I would say, uh, I, I don't have the exact numbers, but I would say uh, it's, uh, again, uh, one post uh, for 100, 200 applicants. It can be, it can be very similar to, to the technical ones. Now, speaking about uh, particle physicists at CERN, uh, did you know that only about 3% of staff are particle physicists at CERN. <laughs> you have much higher chance to be computing engineer and stuff at CERN than being a part of particle physicist and being uh, employed as particle physicist at CERN. Even the CERN is presented completely differently to, about uh, it means those 3% really need uh, support. <laughs> okay, <laughs> uh, we have one question. Are there any sense specifics when it comes to preparing a resume for the application that students need to take into account? Maybe using or using photo or uh, have it only one page or just any, any particularities specifics related to CV? Sure. So I would say regarding photo, uh, I would I would uh, not use it. It's it's not needed. Uh, it can bring uh, undesired uh, bias. So. You, you're, you are not required to post your photo. You may, you can, but you are not required. Uh, what concerns length for uh, early career uh, professionals or students? I would say that between one and two pages should be well enough. Uh, make sure that the content which you write into your CV is really content full, that you are not just boosting, uh, boosting words just to have longer text. Uh, what is uh, what is important is uh, to show what is the problem that you solved, how you approached it, and what was the achievement, how you improved system or or um, analyzed data or or published some paper. Okay, I usually discuss uh, with students that they should put uh, such kind of a resume at the beginning of their CV. Is it good also for them if you put them in, in the beginning, maybe a few, a few lines, uh, yes. which describes what you want, what you pursue, what yes. you're strong? Uh, uh, Definitely, yes. Uh, you can, you can uh, rephrase what you write into motivational letter. Just make sure you don't repeat yourself in uh, in CV and the motivation letter. Uh, this is definitely useful because this can be one of the things which help you stand out over the other applicants, which uh, may not be so successful as you later on. Uh, if you if you are a hiring manager or you are about to hire a colleague for your project. What you get is, uh, is a website with, uh, with profiles of a uh, few hundred people. So you need to use keywords. Now for a technical student, it may be difficult to define the keywords because you are in a, in a early career stage. Uh, you may be looking for the first job ever. Uh, so don't be afraid to ask uh, friends, colleagues, uh, teachers uh, around for help. You may be surprised that they will help you actually. So uh, also discuss your CV with uh, someone more experienced. Uh, 
for example, teacher or, or older older uh, colleague or older friend, uh, so that they can challenge you and they can point out things which uh, smell badly for them, and you can improve your, your application. I think this feedback might not be very happy <laughs> sometimes, or people just expect something different from um, themselves than people tell them how, how they feel about it. So just uh, to set up uh, this this mirror is something that will also move you on. <laughs> That's Even if you are so happy with it, or maybe you will be completely surprised that you can see yourself in different light than the people around you. And uh, I think always just we have problems with students to, uh, to describe in few words, who am I? <laughs> what my strengths are, what my weaknesses, what, what I'm good in. And just think about the things that nothing is weakness or strength, but everything is actually opportunity. So it's good if you just try to re, uh, review uh, your your skills or something what you want to learn and see it on the only positive uh, uh, light. Uh, one question from Ivan. Is there any way we can contact you for any extra questions after the meeting? I guess, uh, uh, if you want to, if Yarka agree, I will send around the presentation Yarka prepared for today. And if you have any questions, so you can send uh, Yarka directly. And so I will also add your email address, the official one for CERN. And you will see it as a question, yes, uh, which you can answer by yourself or if you will pass it to HR department. Yes. Yeah, I think it may work this way. You also edit over there, so it's fine. So, any final words uh, from Eliška? Is she still with us? Yes, I am. I maybe I forgot that I had to include a small text about my um, subjects at university, my skills, and uh, area of my. Uh, focus uh, what is my specialization and something about it and it's interesting that I study dosimetry and uh, radiation protection and uh, at the same time I write uh, I wrote my thesis uh, bachelor thesis about particle physics and now I will select it for uh, data, data selection and acquisition so for computing uh, so uh, that's really true that you have to be open for everything. <laughs> yeah, I, and I that's wanted true. to point out that uh, I think that for a technical student, it's not uh, possible to apply like a particle physicist. Uh, it's uh, only possible to apply for applied physics, computing and something like this. Thank you. Uh, this is this is a good a good catch. Uh, this is the same for doctor students, and the reason behind is uh, because we are particle physics lab, or uh, mainly mainly our physics program is about particle physics. Uh, the particle physics students and doctor students and postdocs can get to CERN to work at CERN through the universities and institutes and academies of sciences. So. Uh, if you are a particle physicist, uh, you can you can get to CERN as a computing engineer, for example, or as applied physics physicist in uh, accelerators physics. So uh, don't don't uh, be disappointed. Uh, but uh, the pure pure applied uh, sorry pure particle physics may not do it for you, as uh, in terms of employment or continued employment at CERN. It's just only a different point of view, how you look at the situation. Someone says it's a, the glass is half full or it's empty. It's empty. So you, you never yes. know how it will take you. I think just people in CERN uh, will look at the CV, will like the person and said, okay, he's he may be eligible for something, what I feel, so new chance. Anyway, okay. so we are slowly coming to, our, to the end. I just uh, give you all just uh, last time. Uh, Last minutes for questions. If I may, I have one follow up on what uh, Eliška said that she had to fill in some additional texts about uh, prior experience. Uh, for this, if you are applying to anything at CERN, 
please make sure you go through anonymously, go through the form, which is uh, the application form, before, long before the deadline. Okay. It is very useful also, for example, when you are, uh, when you are submitting abstracts for contributions at conferences. First, make sure what the format of the application is, what is requested from you. And then start thinking what you fill in. Make sure you uh, give yourself enough time to apply and make uh, the application really detailed oriented, top notch to, to demonstrate how good you are, what are, your, what are your strengths, what are your passions and demonstrate that you, you do know what you want from CERN, how it fits in your grand plan for your life. Uh, are there any keywords which you want to stress out, if you, which should be included in the application? Uh, this is really difficult to say, because if you are applying in a job uh, which gives you job description, uh, like clear one with a with, uh, list of competencies that are desired, this list of experiences which are desired, then make sure this is uh, relevant for the staff position, for example, make sure you cover most of them. First, identify what are the most important ones according to your opinion or opinion of people around you. Discuss this with your friends, with your, with your colleagues, with your teachers, uh, because you can, you can get additional ideas from them how to make your application even better, how to make your CV even better. Uh, then make sure that you cover the, according to you, the most important ones, keywords in the application, and uh, at some, to some level or degree, also everything, or most, most of the requirements for the job. For a technical student, this is really very difficult because you do not know the project for, at first. At the time when you apply, the project has not been yet approved. Okay. So when the project is approved one month later, uh, we can, uh, we get access to the, to the list of applicants to, to the application folder. And then we can, we can choose, uh, according to my keywords, I can choose uh, the, the, the short list of applicants, but, uh, for for you as uh, applying applicant this is really difficult to get the the correct keywords this is why i was suggesting do something which you are passionate about because when you are passionate about you have results you have paper trail of of your successes or uh, exploration paths to demonstrate that if i went this direction it didn't work because you may have some publication you may have some Git, github repository or something this is this is really what what uh, help you stand out. If you are just going to school and doing nothing extra, you may not get selected because uh, there are people who are who are uh, passionate about something beyond school and it's visible. So it's not a red race, like you need to run forward really fast, but think about what you enjoy. Think about, think about what you like to do, what you would like to do in future and direct yourself that way. So I think it was a nice uh, final word. Just be passionate, uh, be open and do always something extra. <laughs> okay, Jarka, thank you very much for your time for uh, this afternoon. Thank you, uh, I think it was Eliška that she joined it. So she just freshly uh, was happy, uh, was ready to share her experience with us. Thank Helena and all participants who stand with us till the end. Okay, thank you, Erka. Thank you very much, Karolina. Thank you very much, Helena. Thank you very much, Eliška. And thanks uh, very much to all of you for, for connecting today. Okay. Uh, keep in touch. Okay, spread the word around. We are here. And it's all this turn. So if you do not apply in October or in August, try it in January again. Okay. Exactly. Thank you and have a nice day. All of you. Thank you very Thank much. You. Have a nice Bye. day. Thank you. Bye. <laughs>